Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. While as cars go by, it is uh, 10 minutes into the 20th day of October uh, 2021, and we're back at another. Uh, Let's see how this uh, plays out, actually. Um, we're at another uh, point where we are going to do another observation vlog. I'm trying a new audio method. We'll see how that ends up working out. Because I do want the background noise. This is the whole thing. Because a large chunk at night, particularly, uh, your observation is auditory. It's, it's with the ears. It's, it's acoustical. And you need to be he hearing the background noise in order to sort of get uh, that information and do that observation. So you have to have an ear out for, well, what we're talking about here, but at the same time, you have to have an ear out for the environment and sort of, uh, if there's any, any animals like skunks around. Uh, one of the, the last video I, I, I edited, uh, it was from the 29th, uh, we had a, a geese, geese fly over, so I heard the geese in there. I didn't hear the trains, but I heard the geese. And anyway, this is uh, uh, an interesting sort of question kind of popped up uh, as you're doing this. And people ask, is this, is this observation or is it politics? Well, the thing is, is this observation because a, a, a politics is basically can be viewed as observational psychology. It's, it's observing how a person behaves, particularly those in the limelight, but those in the media, those uh, who are the policymakers, and of course, there are there is of course the shadow government, which can be defined. Just because a person isn't out front, doesn't necessarily mean that their impact can't be seen and defined. You just simply have to use a number of different methodologies that will sort of give you, I'll give me well, give me an example, black hole. Right? No one, none of the researchers have ever actually seen a black hole. So how do you find a black hole which doesn't emit light? Uh, how do you find it? What you would, so what you would do is you would consider a candidate. You would look for stars, or more particularly stel uh, stellar systems, the, uh, basically two stars or more, a binary star or more, that looks like a, a fuzzy ball. Because what happens, although the black hole can't be seen itself, the material as it goes around the uh, star uh, it does become luminescent. It does uh, uh, absorb radiation uh, in terms of then re-emits it again. So it can become luminous. And you would use the, the, the effect of the black hole on the surrounding environment to determine whether or not you had a black hole or not. This, so it's, it, it is a discovery of indirect means or indirect or call a negative uh, definition by looking at what's not there in terms of uh, the, the overall effect on the surrounding environment. So you see, uh, you know, something being pulled in, something looks like it's going down the drain. Is it giving off the appropriate appropriate uh, X-ray radiation for something that's that's uh, sort of going in that direction? Because uh, you can actually fingerprint the uh, uh, the light, the light going of uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. You can actually fingerprint the light and give it, get its chemical composition uh, using uh, spectroscopy to uh, actually figure out uh, what the star is made of, uh, how large it is, uh, and then because the the like waves here, like, like those audio waves, you do have a type of Doppler effect where something can be red shifted or blue shifted, depending on whether it's coming towards you or away from you. Or there, in other words, the number of characteristics in the waveform itself that comes out of the spectrogram that can be sort of analyzed and then determine what the motion of the star is like uh, or the object that you're looking at. And it's from these characteristics as you get enough stars and enough samples of the stars that you can sort of start making some degree of, of progress in your understanding of what you have. And it takes a long time because you have to get a large number of sam a, a, a large enough sampling of stars, and, and not just the one type. You know, doing a vertical sample, you have to get a lot of different types of stars uh, in, in in your catalog before you can start saying, "Okay, this is this, this is that." And you're not going to say it's not. 
saying, oh, this is this, this is that in terms of absolute certainty. These are approximations. You understand that they're approximations. And you don't have to sort of state that these are approximations. That the, your categorizations, uh, categorizations are all done with the understanding that these are approximations. They're not absolutes. So this methodology can be taken from astronomy, brought into uh, to psychology. This is what we call observational psychology, where, the, where you had uh, observational astronomy. Now you have an ob observational psychology. Now, psychology talks about the soul. Uh, that's the actual name of it. The, the name psychology is actually in Greek, psyche oloia. That's the Greek word for psychology. The psyche part is the soul. And of course, lo loia is the study of, is the word, the words of the soul or study of the soul. And this is why you have biology, uh, which is again Greek, I guess it's, uh, and it actually should be zoology, but, uh, they actually have uh, they have it as the biology rather than zoology uh, because zoa is the um, name for the study of animal but i guess they're trying to bring this to all life so it's biology uh, i think it's, uh, it's, and it's because the english have translated uh zo zoe uh into being the animal zoe itself actually just simply means life it there is no uh, distinction whether it's plant or single cell, multiple cell, it's just zoe. So you would have zoology, right? Zo zoe or a year would be the uh, would be one way of saying. I should I should have to go sit down and check out my terminology, but a little bit better. But uh, uh, again, these are rough draft essays, ver verbal essays, and but anyways, you get the point that you ha you can go out and do these surveys. And these are it starts off with a general survey, and then as the time rolls by, you can sort of start adding in more and more understanding because you have more and more pieces. Well, the thing is with Lionel is I've been studying Lionel now for about five years. Uh, he's been within my observation, and you hear him if you listen to his uh, watch his podcasts or listen to his or watch his uh, YouTube channel. He always complains about people sending him emails. So that's what, but I think that's one of the things I've done, and you can tell how an email impacts him because well, one, he may complain about it, but the question is, does he shift his particular points of view, even let's say a month later after receiving the email? And in some cases he has, in some cases he hasn't. But this is, and so this wasn't me. It wasn't uh, like I don't send it in terms of oh, did you see this? Mine was. And this is what I still do occasionally, the left off now, is you send an email just the way you throw a rock or a pebble into, into a pond. You want to see what the result is, what the response is. So again, because you're dealing with psychology, I think like, psycho like black holes, you can deal with psychology in called negative manners, where you're looking at the surrounding, the impact of psychology on the surrounding environment. And so this is the same thing. You throw a pebble in, you see what his reaction is. You, you see how he reacts to different things. Does he shift his views? Does he shift his opinions? And you see that he, he does have, and this is from observation, he does have this wobble. He does not stay within one particular track. If you listen to uh, some of the other pundits out there, they're on a particular track. They're on a particular thing, and they repeat themselves over and over and over again. And they never move off their track. And the thing is, so let's say, oh, well, there's all, what about neuroscience, right? Neurology. Well, here's a slight problem. And there has been no attempt to get around it. Uh, and so they just simply push it off to the side. So that for me, neurology is more or less a dead science because it's no longer a science. It's now opinion. It's religion. It's belief. You believe in the neurology. Why? Because the maternal twin is a clone. They are, they, they, it is from the same egg cell. It, it is the it is the the same genetic structure splitting into two, creating two different people. So if if everything is chemical, as they say, it's neuro, neuro, neurological. And this is was done in the 1930s. This is who the eugenics were. They believed in the chemical men. This came out of Germany. This is why you have Bayer. This is why you have Pfizer. All these these drug companies. Why are they all chemical? Because they believe in a chemical man. 
And I just say, well, they're just not properly evolved. So we have to help them evolve to the, uh, you know, a better state. So we're going to eliminate the ones who that we consider to be defective. That's their approach to things. Uh, but when you have the twins, the twins do not become the same. You see that there's, there are differences between the two different twins, even on a physiological scale. And one can understand this in chemistry. How do you have differences when something is supposed to be exactly the same in a chemical environment? That's because the chemicals that they absorb into their bodies or that they interact with are, even at a very small level, very can be different. They're not going to be exactly the same. So you'll have initially these minute differences. And then as they get older and they start developing more, you'll have greater and greater differences. And you notice that this the same thing will apply to how a person behaves. Because how a person is treated, how the environment they're in, you know, though it may be the same environment, how a person perceives the environment that they're actually in makes a fundamental difference. And so their psychology is going to change as well, even though you don't see a neurological difference or neurological response to this this change. And so what happens, you can now rule out uh, neurology as a factor in terms of behavior and go back to psychology, the unhidden, the hidden issue, and now talk about uh, now talk about uh, the soul, the hidden part. And this is where I have an issue, and this line was like this. He oh, it's not it's not a psychopath. They're not psychopath. This sociopath. Well, what's the difference? Sociopath is if you look at the origin of the word, where it came from, you begin to realize, and this is going in and reading the dictionary. And I do have a collection of dictionaries in my place, and I do sit down from time to time and read through the dictionary. It's like 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 it would read a book. But it tells you how words are used, right? That's the term of diction, is the use of words. But because they're older dictionary, they tell you how words were used. And you begin to see that how certain words come into the vocabulary and when they come into the vocabulary. And what you see is as more and more neurology kicks in, the term psychopath is dropped and, and in, they inserted sociopath. A sociopath has no fundamental meaning. It's an empty, dead space. A psychopath has, I mean, it means a sick person whose soul is very sick. They have consumed evil. In many cases, they've become evil. That's a psychopath. But of course, oh, you don't want to talk about the devil and evil. That's, you know, biblical stuff. Well, again, here, unfortunately, when you just stated that, you are now a conspiracy theorist. Why? Because as I said before, the conspiracy theorists on either side will we'll only see the surface. They'll see only the tip of the iceberg, the visible part of the iceberg, and say that's the entire thing. They'll miss the 90% that's below that they don't see. As I said, when something is not within your experience, you tend to dismiss it. And this is the case with Lionel. You see that him dismissing a number of different things. Well, it says, well, you, you might as well put the symbols on everything. Because you know what these symbols mean. And he goes in and just does the very cursory overview and doesn't understand that calculus was developed by Newton and Leibniz, and, and Leibniz uh, uh, using Aramaic documents uh, in alchemy. That's the core of religion. That's one of the cores of religion through, 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 through Europe. Have you ever heard of hidden societies? Oh, but who do you think the deep state is? The hidden state. There's still the princes, the kings. The, it is the state of Europe created by the papacy. They're still there. They're the ones who are in the shadows. They're the ones who control the, the borders. They, they're the ones who control the banks. It's their banks. And it's, right, it, it's in the chapter, it does, and those gives his brother's care mother, it's in the chapter where you, where you read uh, the, the Grand Inquisitor. The Grand Inquisitor pops up and says, and, and this is the thing of the whole the whole chapter is comes down to the one basic line of saying you know we're gonna sell them uh, we're gonna sell them freedom as uh, slavery as freedom so uh, the things weren't uh, so the things in history that, that are going on today weren't isolated 
there look go go look at the history of Spain. You'll see the anarchists right from the beginning, from the late eighteen hundreds. You'll start seeing the anarchists pop up. So they're not new; they're just old. They just really haven't been in our recent history applied here. But of course, Lionel then turn around and say, "Well, while history would be a wonderful thing if only were true." Well, apparently, a nine eleven never occurred because, you know, people talk about that in history, but uh, they may be wrong about it. But the thing is, they talk about it, and we know that nine eleven happened. We have the videotape for it. Oh, well, maybe it's not true. Because well, Tolstoy told us it's from Tolstoy. He's the one who said history. History would be a wonderful thing if only were true. Well, so nine eleven never no longer matters because it doesn't occur. It didn't occur. It's simply a figment of your imagination. It is a wonderful concept. Just like everything else, you know, morality, um, nothing really matters. Uh, do what you want, do what you feel. The world is an illusion. This actually comes from Hinduism as well. Hinduism has the same thing, but particularly on the left-hand path. There is no need for morality, no right and wrong. And these, are, this is, you can see, go, if you study the tantrics, you'll find this. The tantric, the tantric uh, Hindus, this is what you'll see because they're basically left-hand path. There are no rules. There are no there is no order. There is no structure. Everything is an illusion. This is what we're experiencing now. Notice how many gurus are popping up. Uh, this month, I think uh, you have a conference in Toronto called the Gaia Conference. These are the these again another set of environmentalists. They're also related to the Raelians. Who are the Raelians? The Raelians are a group in Montreal. Justin Trudeau. Um, that began in the 70s, and, he, and, and the other thing, Lionel Brown put up a picture of this other guy from the 70s uh, named Rajneesh. Do you think these cults just simply disappeared? And, oh, they dissolved. No more. No, they're still there. They're still functional. They're still part of our everyday life. But because our society has opened up and been sort of so distracted by things, we no longer care about that. that these things are no longer within our issue. And because we, you know, you talk about, oh, trying to save the children from being trafficked, it is so, it, it is a horrible thing for that to happen. But when you see that you have people like Epstein who were given escorts by the FBI and by the, you know, uh, you know, by their state and local police, and at the same time they have local police going in and arresting eight-year-olds for bringing a butter knife to school, this is the level of competency that you have with law enforcement. They're not on our side anymore. And the thing is, they, they have a choice to rather protect the people or enforce the rules the government said. said even though some of them are commi actually committing a crime, as long as it's being thought it's a crime, uh, hey, look, they're, 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 they're hugging people. People are really hugging. They, they could be spreading COVID. So they go in with a SWAT team and arrest these people. Serves them right, they shouldn't be hugging in, in, in a pandemic. You know, these people, you know, shouldn't be allowed in hospitals. We shouldn't treat these people. We should throw them out in the streets. This is the arguments you see on Twitter. This is arguments you see on Facebook and Instagram and so on and so forth. And you look at most of the people who are throwing out these arguments. They're not the researchers. What they are are either data scientists. That's the closest they get to actual research. Is They're the data scientists working on mathematical models are not actually working on the real thing. They're working on models. The real researchers, the ones who are actually doing the laboratory work or clinical work, they're all, they're all against this particular vaccine, not all vaccines, because they say the work has not been done properly. I mean, and that there are a lot of, there are significant issues with the vaccine that need to be addressed. Not, not saying stop the vaccine in terms of never bring it again, go and address the serious issues. They've pointed out what the issues are. They've identified them. They brought forward the clinical data. The FDA looked at it. They agreed with the data. The FDA agreed with the data. So did the CDC. The CDC panels agreed with this. But when well, they were overruled politically and they s simply brought forward the vaccines. This is not science. This is belief. But if this is what you want, because you're believing in the environment, and believing in this and believing in that, now do you believe in medical in, in medical science? Let me see what's going on here. 
somebody coming out of a, a, a parking lot here. Well, if you have all these beliefs and that's what you're going to believe, and then there's nothing, there's, there's nothing more to be said because this is what your belief is. And unfortunately, we can see with, with Lionel that, that he is moving, but he's not moving. Uh, right now, he's not moving out of his orbit. He's kind of stuck. But anyway, that, 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 these things take time. It doesn't happen overnight. This, Lionel wants things done now. And then he gets bored of them and he goes, oh, well, I'm, I'm getting frustrated. Well, why are you getting frustrated? Well, because it's not going fast enough. Well, that's the way things go. I mean, to understand something, to do the actual research, it takes months and years. It doesn't go by, it doesn't go by in weeks or days, days a week. It goes by months and years. You go back in history, if you can do this, and read the uh, the the uh, uh, the uh, biographies, the biographies, the war diaries of uh, Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill publishes diaries, publishes his memoirs on the World War II, and you can see to see how he dealt with the length of time in terms of communication. And you see that he he, he was extremely frustrated uh, with what would happen, but because but then again. World War II was, a, in many cases, a war of attrition. Who would, who would, who would basically uh, last, last? The one who lasted last uh, would be the victor. In this case, it was the uh, the uh, English. The um, they were the ones who particularly won everything. Uh, with the uh, with the U.S., they're the ones who sort of were able to tie up the um, the Nazi war machine enough that the, that the more geese. And I think we've got a train coming up too. I can hear the high whine. So you know, the thing is that the Russians, the Soviets, and this is the bizarre part, and this is something that needs to be said for the current situation. No totalitarian regime ever has total control. And none of these totalitarian regimes ever consider themselves to be simply totalitarian. They were communists. I mean, let, let Lionel argue with and these other Soviet people that are his card, card, card carrying Marxist friends. Let them go argue with Stalin. Let, let them go argue with Pol Pot. Let them go ar argue with Car Castro. Castro. There's a Castro still in power in Cuba. Go argue with him. Tell them, oh, you're not a so you're not real you're not a proper socialist, uh, you're not a proper communist, uh, because you're not the, it's not a planned economy. Oh, well, yeah, it's a planned economy. Cuba's a planned economy. Same thing with Russia when it was under the Soviet Union. It's a planned economy. It just was planned by these particular people. And when the plan went south, they said, oh, they're not really communists. And this is it. The plan, the, the whole term, oh, they're not really communists. The the phrase pops up when the so socialists have basically have egg on their face because they screwed up. After the, uh, it was basically, you know, a kid breaks something. This is one of the videos I posted recently to a family group on Instagram. And it's the kid, they're playing, two kids playing uh, soccer in the house. One kid, the older kid, kicks the ball, breaks the cabinet, and it's all glass and everything. And the ball bounces back, and the younger kid catches it. He's standing there. The parents come in. <laughs> the kid, the younger kid, is standing there with with a the, with the ball in his hand. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> They didn't say it, but you can see, see the look on his face. He realizes that he was left holding the ball. And this is what communism is like. Communism is basically a work. It's, there is no fundamental reality to communism other than there are people out there breaking things. And then when they finally get caught because things really go badly, so they leave other people to hold the bag, you know, holding, holding the responsibility. <laughs> like, oh, God. I didn't do this. This was done before I was here. I just got here. <laughs> you know, this this is how this is how ten million Ukrainians starved to death. And the thing is, if you look at the history of Ukraine, well, you can't call it a part of Russia because you know it's not. It, it look at the history. Okay, let's look at the history. The core of Russia was Ukraine, but after success, but after succeeding attacks. 
by Germanic tribes, or they're called Germanic tribes, uh, they eventually moved the, the, the capital to Moscow. So it started off in in uh, in, in in Ukraine in in uh, Kiev, but then eventually they moved. But the thing is, you have these these sort of successive attacks, and of course the Germans at the time all they do is uh, uh, look at the, uh, the Japanese and the German the Nazi comfort women. And what the were they were? They were women from the local area. They were Ukrainian women, Russian women, who were turn, put into these particular breeding programs. That the Nazis had, where they were, they were ha having German children, and this only was surely over a period of time. This is how Ukraine, the Russian area, became German, became European, and they, they, there is no real difference between German and, and, and European. And there's a lot more to this in terms of history, and this can be observed. And as I say it can be observed because you talk to people who've gone through the experience, and I have a group of people like that. Uh, it was is it was difficult. It wasn't an easy thing, but there were things that could be done out of sight, out of mind type of thing. Like there were still monks, there were still priests in in in, in Russia and Soviet Union. Uh, they didn't all belong to the state church, but in many cases, the uh, soldiers just didn't care. The ones who were supposed to arrest them if they were dare doing something different. They just went, you know, they went about, they did their business, they stayed quiet and didn't cause any trouble, and they were left alone, more or less. Of course, the prayers often helped to help as well, too. The sort of, you know, and so I've been sort of, I've experienced it that the, that, that, that prayers do indeed help. Uh, it's bizarrely enough, things are going wrong, and you say your prayer, you, you bless yourself. This is sort of the uh, Eastern Christian mantra of, mm hmm. Uh, and as you do this, uh, the problems that you're ex experiencing uh, kind of disappear. But what happens is you do have a number of, of, of things you can observe if you spend a long, long enough time doing this in terms of history, in terms of politics, so you can get a feel for how people behave and have behaved in the past. That is observational psychology, behavioral science. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life.